you ever get to drive a purple car? No, I drive a green car. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in America. Before that, I was in the UK. So I'm homeless. <laughs> When did you come to Pakistan? So I came about a month ago and uh, first I was in Karachi for like probably like three, three and a half weeks. Now I'm here in Lahore. So do you have a home here in Lahore? No, I don't. Oh, I'm staying with my friend Leah. And I have a lot of friends here though that I stay with. Right now, to be honest, like I said, I don't really have a home. I kind of move around a lot. Uh, I was in Japan before. Now I'm in America. Before that, I was in the UK. So, I'm homeless. <laughs> <laughs> but does all this traveling really tire you out or you enjoy it? I hate it now. To be honest, like, I've been on a plane so much since I was 12, 13, when I was racing in Europe. And when you're on a plane every week, traveling, it gets tiring. And you don't realize actually how much time you waste in airports and traveling. Like, it's, it's, it's a crazy amount of your time. So I wish that they still had planes like Concorde or the supersonic planes so we could get <laughs> to places much quicker. Speed is really important for you. Speed is important. Speed and power. <laughs> so, do you remember when you got your first car? Uh, my first car on the road uh, was when I was 17, and uh, and then it was a Mercedes A Class. I remember it. It got got beaten up quite hard. Uh, my first time I drove a racing car was after I won the world championship in go karting. Uh, I did a Formula Four test in France in Le Mans, and that was the first time I ever drove a racing. So, what's your favorite color? Uh, purple. But do you ever get to drive a purple car? No, I drive a green car. <laughs> <laughs> I like pink and purple, believe it or not. I don't know why. I actually like to wear pink shirts, purple shirts, things like that. I don't know why, I just like so it. So, where are all your trophies and awards? Believe it or not, I'm, I'm not really a materialistic or trophy kind of guy. I don't actually really keep them. Usually, I just leave them with the team. Um, but there are some trophies in, in our house in London. Um, I just never really cared that much about trophies, to be honest. I like the memories. What is the dream car that you always wanted to race in? Formula One car. So uh, my dream is to inshallah get to Formula One, and I want to win the World Championship for Pakistan. So that is why I started racing. That is why I work so hard. That is why I've been going through this for 15 years. Then that's still the end goal. Uh, it's part of the journey, just like anything in life, any sport, any business, any person. When you want to get and be the best in the world at something, it's not easy. Uh, and there's a lot of time and effort that goes behind it. But like, what is the make of the car? Um, I can't say that, because <laughs> the thing is, uh, I don't know who's going to wanna, gonna want me to drive for them, so I have to be impartial. <laughs> That's why you didn't give me that answer. Yes. So, are you doing it for the money, are you doing it for fame, or are you doing it because it's your passion? No, I'm doing it because it's my passion, because if I was doing it for the money, one, I probably wouldn't be nowhere near as good. I wouldn't be taking the risk. Racing is really a sport that only rewards you when you get to the top, frankly. So, you know, I do it because I like the risk. I like racing against other people. I like proving I'm better than other people. And that's what I live for. The money comes because of that. The money comes because of a result of that. Um, if if, if, I think believe in anything. If you do it for money, you're not going to do it to the best of your ability. If you're passionate and you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. That's true. So when two teams are racing or three or four teams are racing, is there a lot of competitiveness and how does it come out? Yes, because as a racing driver, the first person you have to beat and you can't lose to is your teammate. Because your teammate is trying to end your career and I'm trying to end his career. We are in the same car, the same machinery. If I lose to him or he loses to me, it's not good for your reputation, so we have to beat each other. The first, most important opponent that you're, to, you're at war with is your teammate, the guy in the other car, because you're constantly compared to him. So do you play video games? Does that help? No, I don't play video <laughs> games. I'm not really a video game guy, to be honest. I, I find it quite boring. So I, all the people that are playing Formula 1 video games are not really learning anything? No, but we do a lot of simulations. So we drive proper racing simulations that uh, usually teams have. They build these rigs. They're massive, they spend a lot of money on them. And because we can't practice that much, it's the only way we can learn tracks and, and explore different techniques of driving. You know, how I can improve myself. For example, when I finish a race weekend, I already know there's so many things I could have, that could have done better. I could have, I could have braked in a certain way, I could have come off the brakes earlier, I could have slid the car more like this, put the power down earlier. And you can't always practice that in real life. So what we do, or what I do, I go back to the simulator and I drive it all day and uh, it's pretty much nearly like driving the real thing, but you just don't have the fear factor. So that's the only thing. 
you have some drivers that are very good on a simulator, but are not as good in real life. Mm -hmm. Because in real life you need balls and courage, mm -hmm. and in simulator you don't. Is there any emergency procedure that you've taught before going onto the track? Well, if you're on fire, you stop the car and get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any track in particular that you feel like, you know, you really need to overcome? It's a fear of yours to go on that track and you know that you really want to do it, but you know that it's going to be a little... Um, there's always fear, but I never once thought I couldn't do it. If that guy can do it, I can do it, and I can do it better than him. So, always when I'm going, there are some tracks that are scarier than others because, for example, I'm racing in America now. Everything is lined with concrete walls. When you hit a concrete wall at 200 miles an hour, the likelihood of you getting hurt or killed is quite high. Um, and blunt force trauma to the brain is quite high. But for me, it doesn't bother. I mean, as long as I get killed quickly, it's fine. But as long as up until that point, I'm having the best time of my life, I'm the happiest person. So when you were in school, when did you decide, or when you were, you were young, what was that first moment that made you decide that you wanted to be in this field? When I was at school, I didn't really like any other sport. I, I didn't know about racing at the time. N nothing turned me on. No, no sport turned me on. Um, academics didn't really fulfill me. I was, I was okay at school. I was pretty good, but like not like a superstar, not a math genius by any means. Um, but. I jumped in a go-kart, and I still remember it. Um, the tingling I had in my hands, and I felt alive. And then I was like, this is what I want to do. Uh, and then I had to convince my, my parents, because my mom never wanted me to do it. She still never watched me race in 15 years. Never seen a race. So, uh, but I told her, I said, look, mom, uh, when I started proving myself and winning, I said, this is really what I want to do. Please don't stop me from chasing my dream. So when I said it at eight years old, and she, she let me do it. And do you feel like this lifestyle, does it ever overwhelm you? Do you need a break from it? And if you do, what do you do? No, I don't like having breaks because I'm a very intense person. I like to be immersed in racing. I live and breathe it every day. Um, it's all I want to do at the moment. Um, anything I do in life, I do it 110%. I, do, I believe I'm an all or nothing person. You either do it first class and to be the best or just don't bother doing it at all. Um, I believe when you have breaks, you cool off too much. I'm quite a hot-headed person, so I like to stay hot in my head. I like to be immersed in the, the sport at all times. I don't want to relax because there's always someone better than you. So to be the best at all times and to keep improving, you, you can't afford to relax. Who inspires you the most? It doesn't have to be a racing car figure, but just somebody no, who not. inspires you. <laughs> uh, my father, because I'll tell you why, because his dedication that I've seen him put into me is, and, and I never see it, if I could be half the man he was, I'd be, I'd be very happy. I mean, since I started racing, he came to every race, every practice, every time I've ever been on track. Whether it's snowing, raining, sunshine, doesn't matter. Whether it's halfway across the world, doesn't care. He's there. Um, and before I started racing, I wasn't very close to my father. He was always away. Um, then when we started racing, we, we formed a formidable bond for 15 years. We've been together. He's my best friend. We're, we're, we're together every time. I mean, it's incredible. I mean. We're together nearly every day, and we're, we've gone through the highs together, the lows together, there's a lot more lows than highs, the emotions, we've cried together, there's so many things, because he, he's, he's living his, it's almost like he's living his life through me. Everything, when I win, it's a win for him. You know, when I lose, it's a loss for him too, and when he sees me upset, and when things are really hard, he, he's upset too. Wow. So tell me, is there any particular training, or diet, or um, I don't believe in diets <laughs> because Pakistani food is too good. My favorite food is Nihari. So I, I train very hard so that I don't need to diet. I train twice a day. We do a lot of cardiovascular. We do a lot of strength, especially for the neck, because I explained to you why. Um, like a fighter pilot, like a fighter jet, uh, a fighter plane, is they have wings to make the plane lift. We have wings to push the car down. They're basically fighter jets upside down. So in the corners, because our cornering speed is extremely high, much higher than a normal car, very high, we pull three, four G. And that means when I'm in a turn, my neck, my head, my body weighs four times more than it does now. So to be able to hold that and to keep the blood in the head, just like a fighter pilot, we have to squeeze our legs, we have to be very strong, otherwise you're gonna pass out. Wow. Oh, your neck's just gonna fall off. That happens, like sometimes our necks get so tired, if you haven't trained them enough, I once I did a Formula 2, uh, no, sorry, a Super Formula test in Japan. That car, you pull 5G. I never experienced 5G in my life. No matter how much training I did for the neck, halfway through the day, I went through turn three in Fuji, and my neck just completely collapsed, and it was gone for a week. 
it was like I couldn't move. I could not move. My, I couldn't hold my head up. It was just it's so hard on the muscles. How did you finish that race? Uh, no, that was a practice. I couldn't really finish the rest of the day. <laughs> they 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 padded the side of the headrest, so my head was wedged. But still, it was not the same because even when you're turning, okay, your head might not be moving, but your brain is being squashed to the side of your skull, so you can't really see where the corners are going. You always have to look in. You can't be looking away. Is there anything in the future you'd like to see in the Formula One racing world which you feel is not there right now, which could assist drivers to be even better at what they do? I think the Formula One world won't do much from that, from that side of things to help people. They are doing a W series, the women's series, to promote females in the sport. So they're funding all of them, which is fantastic. Because I have come across a few female drivers in my time since I was young that were extremely good. Um, they, but there's, you don't see as many because there's not as many that start in the first place. There's way more bad male drivers. But there's, I've only seen four or five females, but like one or two are extremely good. Mm -hmm. So there's more of that. They're trying to get more diversity. There's not many colored drivers in all of motorsport in the world. Um, and to be honest, uh, the rest, I think, is something I would have to do. That's something I want to do in the future once my racing career is winding down. The next thing is to find the next. There's going to be someone a lot better than me in this country, I guarantee you that. We just got to find it. So what is your future plan? So... If not racing, or oh, after when racing. racing, yeah. Well, next year I'm racing in Indy Lights. It's like the Formula 2 of America. Then I want to race Indianapolis 500. Inshallah after that, Formula 1. Uh, after racing, I've always wanted, I've, I've always been a big fan of education, you know? And I really think that's something, one of my heroes in racing was Ayrton Senna, and he educated 12 million underprivileged kids in Brazil, where he's still a hero to this day. He died in 1994 in a crash in racing in Formula 1, uh, three times world champion. Um, that is something I would love to do next time. That's amazing. And you want to bring that initiative to Pakistan? Yes, in places where uh, kids, especially little girls, don't have access, access to education. Yes. Would you ever like to set up a school in Pakistan to teach children how to drive and then eventually let them also like guide them? Into that will also be something in the future, but for now, education is more important. It is. It yes, is. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.